In today's video, I'm going to tell you why you should be documenting your projects and sharing them with people online. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Maker's Muse. Now, I've been a tinkerer for a very long time and one of the things I used to love doing was sharing my experiences building a project or working on something with my friends online. But something I've noticed recently over the last few years is social media has taken such a stranglehold on our lives and we do share things constantly, but it has an impermanence to it. It's so fleeting. So when you share a photo on Instagram or a post on Facebook, it very quickly becomes buried. And yes, it's stored elsewhere and I'm sure everything I've ever done is on some server somewhere. But in terms of making that accessible to others, not really. If I show my experiences doing something, it's not really gonna help someone a few years down the line. There's no chance you're gonna see it. But with the maker movement, I think it's extremely important to talk about the idea of documenting and sharing your projects because I don't think enough people do it and I'm not quite sure why. When I used to build combat robots, I would use the Robo Wars Australia forum and we have a section on there called build reports. So when you're designing a new combat robot, we would do featherweights which are 13.6 kilos or 30 pounds. You would actually start a new thread with your team name and the robot's name, you could change it and go through the build process. You know, you could show your ideas, your sketches, your 3D models on CAD and other people could come in and share their opinions. Maybe, maybe they think you should do something differently, or maybe you have a question and they would answer it. The really amazing thing about these build reports though is they're still there years after I created them and many other people have created their own since. So what would happen is when people would come in like newcomers, they would have a massive catalog of information they can use to influence their own projects which is extremely valuable and I think important for us because as a species, we build on what was done before us to move forwards iteratively, which I have a whole video on iterative design right here if that kind of thing interests you. But as I said, now in 2018, all of our forms of social interaction, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, they're very fleeting and non-permanent. So I'm gonna share with you my ideas for documenting your projects, whether they're 3D printing, robotics, woodwork, uh, upholstery, I don't care. You should share your ideas and experiences and projects online and I'm gonna share with you how I would do that. First of all is the actual documentation stage. So when you're working on a project, it's really easy to just heads down, work hard, and then suddenly something pops up later. But I would stop and at every major stage, try to document what you're doing. Now you don't have to spend a lot of money. There's this sort of myth that making things for you know, high quality content on YouTube or you know, photos and things, you need very expensive cameras. You don't. Um, when I first started Maker's Muse, this was my point and shoot, the Ixus 220HS. You can pick these up secondhand for 50 bucks US <laughs> if you can find them. This is the quality I get off my Ixus 220HS. It's an old camera, it's like five years old, six years old now but I got by with it filming heaps of my videos early on for Maker's Muse. This is all you need to document your projects and to be quite frank, in 2018, smartphones probably have a good enough camera in them. Now this is an unusual smartphone, it has a thermal imaging camera built in, but you probably have a phone in your pocket that's more than capable of documenting your build. So just whip it out and take photos as you go along, especially if you run into a problem or if you overcome something and you wanna talk about it later. If you're doing something on a computer like coding or 3D modeling, I can highly recommend getting a cheap webcam like this, this is the, the C920. It's not the cheapest, but it will do high quality video. And you can use free image capture software like OBS. I use a C920 webcam and OBS Studio to record my screen captures for when I'm talking about CAD designs like this. And you can use the webcam's built-in microphones as you can hear, it's not that great, but you can spend a little bit more money to then use a, a proper microphone like this if you intend to do more screen captures. And as you can hear, it gives it a much better audio quality. 
but it is a little bit more money and it's only worth doing if you intend to do a lot of this sort of thing. Now, where do you post your content? I used to use a website called Photo Bucket and it has just become the worst website now. So I pulled all my images off that. But if you want to host images, again, I don't recommend the social media sites because they're not very permanent and difficult to search. I would recommend something where you can use a link and share it. So you can do it with Dropbox, you can do it with Google Drive, you can do it with Flickr or Imager, uh, OneDrive if you have happened to want to use that. But there's heaps of free options, you don't need to pay any money and they're all perfectly suitable for storing your images in the cloud to share with other people around the world. And then we have YouTube. Now, recently the whole demonetization thing has become a big deal and yes, if you're trying to make money off the platform through advertising, it is but I originally started uploading videos to YouTube for documentation reasons. I would film something that I've been working on or I needed help with and I would use YouTube as a free video uploading platform to then share my content. Now think about that for a second. You're uploading high definition footage, several gigabytes in size, to a platform that is free that you can share with people all around the world. And that's pretty valuable in itself, just disregarding the demonetization issues that have happened recently. So what I would recommend is not even to worry about editing for your first videos. Again, you just grab the point and shoot, hold it, hold it at, the, con at the, the subject and document what you want to do. You know, you have a question, you, have, you want to show something. And as you build projects, you'll start to find that you start figuring out things that other people haven't. And maybe you might want to start doing tutorials. So that's where I got into it. I would build combat robots and then I started doing tutorials on how to build combat robots. And you can see how this log of content that you're producing, which isn't really beyond what you're doing anyway, you're doing the projects anyway, starts to help other people years beyond when you actually did it. Okay, so a few final tips with sharing your work online. Firstly, don't be afraid to show failure. In fact, celebrate failure. If you make something and it falls apart, show it because you can guarantee someone else out there will be doing the same thing and your video will probably save them a heck of a lot of pain. If you do overcome something, show that you've overcome it. And again, as I said, consider making a tutorial if it's something that no one else has covered before, but don't be afraid of failure. And most importantly, you're putting yourself online in public. Take criticism on board. There is no point sharing your projects with the world if you're gonna do it in a vacuum and just be like, yep, there's my thing, it's perfect and I'm not gonna to listen to anyone and there it is. Why? I highly recommend checking out a YouTube channel, Ivan Miranda. He has built massive 3D printed tanks and remote controlled vehicles. And if you go through the chronological order of his videos, his first ones didn't work. They they had issues and he documented them and people in the comments were sharing their ideas of how to improve it. You know, increase your reduction ratio, change the weight distribution, change the design slightly and his recent projects do work. So he's gone through this iterative process with help from others by documenting his builds online. Whether or not they worked or not, it didn't matter. He shared it anyway. And beyond that, it's also great enjoyable content if you're into that sort of thing. And next hand in hand with criticism is ask questions. If you don't know how to do something, it's not a failing on you as a human being. We all keep learning. I'm not afraid to ask questions in my videos and you shouldn't be either because you can guarantee there'll be someone out there who is a better expert at what you're trying to do and they will give you their input and always thank them for it because again, guys, we're here to imp help improve and help each other become better people. So don't, don't be afraid to ask questions. And again, you want a, a platform where people can contribute. So uh, that's why I like YouTube because it has the comment section which you can search through and people will upvote. Uh, well, you know, it'll filter the best ones to the top, that sort of thing. And it's permanent. It'll stay there for years to come. You can, you can find videos from people 10 years ago now on YouTube. It's still there, which is awesome. And one final tip is to try to keep the content in chronological order. This isn't always possible, but if you're working on something, don't be afraid to split it up and go from the conceptualization stage to your first prototype, to the next, to the next, to the next. Share it in those chunks and that will mean people will be able to help you and answer questions and give you critique along the way. Instead of just you know, showing something right at the end when it's all done and it's too late and you're done with the project. There is a definite difference between uh, documenting builds and just showing off projects 
for entertainment purposes on YouTube. I do a bit of both and there's definitely value in just showing projects for entertainment value. But if you want actual help to build things and to actually help people follow along, chronological order videos is a really good way, way to do it. You can even do it in playlists on YouTube. Uh, I will use that as an example because that's the platform I've chosen. So thanks for watching guys. I hope this video inspired you to grab your camera, whether it's a cheap point and shoot, your phone or whatever you've got on hand and to go and document your projects. I don't care what it is. It could be biohacking. It could be laser cutting. It could be <laughs> bird watching and the, the, your camera gear that you make perfect for bird watching. Whatever, I, it doesn't matter to me. As long as you go and document it and share it with the world to help improve what we have as a society and help bring this maker movement forwards to the next generation because they need to know what was done before and they need help to get up on their feet to start doing their discoveries and their, their work. And please share with me what you, what you do on Twitter at Makers Muse. If this is the first time you're gonna go pick up a camera and film what you've just done, I would love to see it. Share it with me at Makers Muse. I will definitely check it out on Twitter. And if you have any suggestions for how to better document builds and ask questions and share your projects with the world, please let me know in the comments. I do read them and I will let you know what I think. And it will help, as I said, other people for years to come as they come back to this video and look in those comments. So thanks for watching guys. My name is Angus and I aim to empower your creativity with technology, which embodies this video very nicely. And if you did enjoy it, I would love to have you subscribe. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.